Boom. Boom goes the dynamite. Boom goes the hand clap. Here we go. Whoosh! I should probably do that slower so I can actually sync it up. There you go. Mm. Ah, round of applause. Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian, and this is, as you're probably used to by now, Episode 7. This is Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, and I am joined again by that man, the myth, the legend, who looks fabulous in a white t-shirt. His name is Francisco Gonzalez. How are you doing, sir? I am great. Uh, I've it... had a spectacular <laughs> week. I'm back in my white t-shirt. I still haven't yes. shaved. Yes. And I am ready for episode seven. It's all going swimming. Yeah. This is going yeah. exactly according to plan. Yes. Um, and that intro almost went sideways, but I think I saved it at the end. I'm not sure. I'm, uh, we'll, let, we'll let history Time decide. Time will tell. Time will tell. Anyway, we are up to episode seven. And once that thing buffers, here we go. Ah, yes. Here we go. We are on day four. Can day we have a dramatic four. reading, please? I spoke to the one who smelled of death. He gave to me his ears. And Ew. crosses that were marked were made into a veil of tears. And Molly is doing the walk of shame. <laughs> Although it's not a walk of shame if you're not ashamed. Yeah. No, no, one, no one's looking. And I don't think she's terribly ashamed personally. Maybe on a, like a family level. Because it's... Oh, uh, this as, is as the day where we have the weird guy standing outside. Yeah. That freaked me the fuck out as a kid. Yeah, also, me too. Like motionless, just standing there. Yep. So, some, I actually have. So, sorry to interrupt, but I've actually had no. this sort of recurring nightmare of someone just, you know, uh, in horror films when they pan over to the window and there's like some dude or some woman in a long dress just standing on the lawn, like in the distance. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and and uh, or just you know you walk into your living room and there's just some figure off in the corner just standing there doing nothing just standing there, that freaks me the fuck out and I've had that since I was a kid so that you know just starting this day was a massive freak out to me age fifteen or sixteen or whatever. Forget it. Also, anyway, just said over that she you. found a microfiche at the library, placing this. <laughs> Firmly in the 90s. Have you noticed yes. This guy they still have microfiches in Danish yeah. libraries, by the way, and they're fun to play with. Yeah, they still have microfiches in libraries, but no one uses them anymore. You can just use the internet to look up old newspapers. <laughs> However, it is fun to go up hell. to a Danish librarian and say, can I have a look at the microfiche? Because fiche is very close to the Danish word for cunt. Oh. So that might cause a bit of confusion. I see. Um, oh, I was just going to say that the poem at the beginning of this uh, thing refers to Crash and the Voodoo Codes. Although we don't really have to deal with the... This is actually a very short day, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I think I've spliced a couple of days into this, or at least we get halfway through the ne uh, through day five. What mm case? -hmm. Um, but we do get to have the interrogation scene with Crash, which is absolutely one of my favorite parts. Of the game. I think I've said this a couple of times throughout this playthrough. This is my favorite part. This is also my favorite part. Wait, but, the interrogation scene or the scene in the church with Crash? Yeah, uh, interrogating, uh, like, Gabriel interrogating right, Crash right. in the church. Okay. Sorry, it's yes. just because the icon is called the interrogate icon, so yes, I kind of... Course. Get that yeah, a little course. mixed up there. Sure. Um, it's not. It's not like okay. mostly resting one butt cheek on a pixelated table and just half falling off and pointing at him like he's like the schoolmaster in Pink Floyd's The Wall kind of thing. Um, <laughs> that was an obscure reference, you, kids. Yes, you in the leather jacket, stand still, laddie. <laughs> <laughs> and then he reads aloud the lyrics to Money. Um, but yeah, well, at least a giant butt wearing a powdered wig doesn't come and vomit all over him or anything. <laughs> you should totally put an Easter egg in Shardlight where, um, uh, oh, where, where uh, the antagonist just transforms oh, into, into a butt. <laughs> the butt from uh, Pink Floyd's <laughs> The Wall. I would have loved that. <laughs> Missed opportunity, I'm just telling you. Eh, yeah, well, maybe in the special cool. edition. <laughs> the special edition where uh, Ben has to redraw all the graphics in 640 by 480. Mm, yes. I mean, he enjoyed, drawing, he enjoyed drawing a big butt. Can I so. ask you about some stuff? I think he would, yeah. Mm. Um, also, just to go. talk about the game, you know, yes. just like offhandedly. Um, of course. I actually Look, think it was a very smart decision on so Jane's part to, halfway through the game, 
just close the case. Hmm. And instead of you sort of leeching off uh, your law enforcement buddy, just have you really be on your own. It's a very clever way of upping the stakes without presenting some sort of immediate danger or anything. Sure. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, it makes sense that, obviously, if this is a detective game, and you're do you doing mean? the investigation, it would be kind of... Prove there's a legitimate oh, I love that. You order. need to prove, prove <laughs> that there's... Give me a lead on the call. Yeah, um, that, is, that is classic adventure gamey thing. We've got three uh, trials to follow. You can solve them in any order you want. Uh, yeah. And the character just has to sort of rattle off I'll your objectives. I was just night. harping on Stuart Rosen's terrible direction to make it sound like it's not a seamless <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of winning you over on that one, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Anyway, uh, yeah, so like if you, if Gabriel had been working sort of at odds with the police or the whole game, then it would have been kind of stupid because it, yeah, it makes more sense for the police to kind of brush it off and have you, it gives you more to do. So yeah, yeah no, it is a also, very good decision. You are kind of doing the police's work for them. Uh, for right. all we know, mostly he's just sitting there in his office picking his ass 24-7. Um, and, and not really doing any detective work. Uh, and you're kind of running around doing uh, all the work for him. And actually, I know how that sounds. Because right now, you have to do all the work for him again just to reopen the case. You have to do the three trials thing. But, um, but it, it does... Um, because one one of the criticisms, and trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. One of the criticisms leveled against Blade Runner, for instance, Harrison Ford said he's a detective that doesn't do any detective work, and in mm. Gabriel Knight, you're a you're not a detective, but you're doing all of the detective work. So sure. to constantly have this motivation for Gabriel to get more and more involved is pretty good. Even though at this point you're kind of wondering, you know, is this still about the book or is there something more going on? Right. That's Crash. Actually, motivation-wise, see, um, we could talk about the technical limitations of having this binocular vision and just moving it around with the mouse, and uh, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, mm. I just want to quickly ask you, as a master storyteller... Uh, storyteller in, uh, I'm not you know, a master storyteller. Roberta Williams is a master yeah, I was storyteller. Ah, oh, damn it, you beat me to that punchline. Um, but the motivation for Gabriel right now is that the novel, is it helping his friend? I don't think it ever was helping his friend. Is it to get in Malia's pants? He's kind of already done that. Uh, what is his motivation currently? What do you think? Um... Because he doesn't, he's not at the point yet where he's going, I am the Schottenjäger, I am the heir to the throne of, of mysterious German bullshit. I think so, his motivation on, right now is to, to know. he doesn't, you know, you know he's put in all this work. People. <laughs> and he's done all of this stuff, and he knows that there's something big happening, and he's suspecting that there's something big happening. And he's not the type of guy that's going to be like, oh, well, they closed the case, all right, that's it, I'm going to let it go. He but he's, a, to... he's an author, he could just figure any shit out. I mean, uh, what he's seen so far should have been plenty of, you know, well, jumping off think... points of write fiction. I think it's gone beyond wanting to write fiction. I think it's now he's genuinely interested in the voodoo angle, and he sees that there's something actually about? something dangerous Not happening. Something about yeah, but I mean, do, do you see what I mean? That he's sort of yeah. in the in-between point of, I want to write a book because I'm sure. broke and, and I, I, and I save suck at this. Life. Yeah, and uh, I'm now the heir to German bullshit. Yes, He's like right. in the mid tipping point where I'm You're not, not sure what his motivation is, other than you know what this is interesting. No, I'm just gonna follow it, and I'm not quite sure why yet. Hmm. So as it is, he's now talking to uh, the heir to the Marilyn Manson throne in uh, <laughs> Catholic Church. I mean, he's pasty faced, and uh, yeah. No, I always wondered if. Why he was pasty faced? Is it because he's on drugs, or is it because he got Let choked or something? Some I think both. Now. Okay. I think both. I mean, they've made him sick, like unspecified yeah. sick. Yeah. So he's kind of pale, and the narrator, even when you look at him, goes, "Okay, this dude looks fucking sick." I mean, yeah, look at him. He looks Tell like me. he's got. I mean, <laughs> Actually, damn, Reggie, I've heard of dreadlocks, but shit locks. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I take back There's the Marilyn Manson thing. No one's gonna get. Yeah, I, I didn't even. I, I didn't get. It. I'm just gonna gloss over that one. It's okay. Uh, but anyway, that is not. If a anybody Manson. got that <laughs> reference, please write in the comments. Please write in the com. Yes, do leave us a comment, and explain it to me because that's just, whoop, that's just me going with my head over my yeah, head. Fair hand enough. overhead. Whatever. All right. Anyway, you talking to that crash? Uh, I like this dialogue tree because they went to the trouble 
of recording a lot of dialogue for Gabriel just asking him a bunch of stuff and him going, I don't want to talk about that. I don't know you. Fuck you. Also, he swears a lot, which was yes. another example of, oh, wow, this game swears. Okay. Yes. Now, but as you a young teenager uh, in, in okay. Denmark, but that doesn't really matter, uh, you know, okay. listening to this dude swear his head off uh, in 1993 or 4 is... I, that was, like, I wouldn't say a big deal, but it was like, holy shit, you can do that? Yeah, I felt the same way. And then, of course, I had to, like, turn the volume down so my mom wouldn't hear and say, <laughs> What are you playing? Well, since... You know who is really... Actually, so, have you played uh, Police Quest 4? Not to bring it up again, because it's a terrible <laughs> game. Uh, no, I've, but, all, I've only played the disc version, and I haven't finished it. Okay. I've only played, like, the first quarter Tell of it or so. Well, quarter, there's a character... Sorry. Quarter. There's a, police, there's a character in Police Quest 4 named Dennis now, something. He's, a, he's like a white... He's a neo-Nazi, basically. And there's a bit where you go to his apartment, that's not the only way and... Know. Every single thing that you touch or look at in the apartment, he says something, but he swears. Come on. So it's a, like, really stop that, fucking really? touching my shit, or whatever. <laughs> and it just, it's one of those try hard things where it just sounds like they're making him swear for the hell of it. And it's just really over the top and stupid. About Crash, however, does not suffer from this problem. No, but when Crash, I mean, Crash doesn't like swear his head off, but he no, does no. it in a sort of. Uh, he does it for dramatic effect. Yeah, for dramatic effect. And in a, in a very, I mean, it's easy to look at a game like the Orion Conspiracy that just throws the oh, yeah. F word around, just like you say, for the hell of it. Yeah. And then you have a game where, Tell me what you know. like 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 this game, you have a character that does swear, and then you have other characters that don't. Um, have you played The Longest Journey? Yes. Um, where, of I, <laughs> well, I know exactly who you're talking about. Uh, yes, uh, the hacker dude. I can't remember his name. Um, oh, Burns Flipper? Yeah, Burns Flipper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's him. I was thinking more about that guy that sells April out and her friends to the people. And he asks to go on a date with her, and if you stand him up, he's like, Well, fuck you, April fucking Ryan, you fucking fuck, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's completely out there, and yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I was going to make the comparison that this game, uh, I suppose maybe it is a linguistic barrier, hashtag second language and all that, but uh, this game kind of gets the uh, feel right, like this is where you would normally inject uh, profanity, and then you have Ragnar Turnquist, um, who apparently likes writing very long pieces of dialogue, um, and yes, he, he just does. has... As one or two characters that just swear their fucking head off, heads off, mm. and then the rest of the game is completely profanity-free. Uh, so yeah. that's a very strange juxtaposition. Anyway. I don't know where I'm going with that. Mm. Um, oh yeah, acting. Acting. Hey, are you okay? No, he is not okay. I mean, can you fucking look at him? Yeah. I think I Why is his nose go. normal color and his face white? <laughs> Are you all right? Good question. And it's, again, are you all right? Oh, did you go gurgle? Did you go into the uh, into the confessional in this playthrough and talk to the priest? No, I should have done that because that is Stuart Stuart Bonghead Rosen himself. Oh, hello, Father. What's that smell? Don't worry, my child. It is the herb of life. It is the burning bush, if you will. Yes. Now hail Mary the fuck out of here. Yeah. What's wrong with his eye? Uh, it's a bit bulgy. Um, I mean, uh, he, yeah. he did, he did get right choked. There. Crash's face shows signs of strangulation. So yeah. if he was choked, how was he choked? Well, that, that was just at the end of it. At the end of it, they just, you know, uh, mentally pressed on his windpipe or some shit. Is that shit, what happened? Yeah, first, first they gave him the flu, and then they okay. sort of tickled his esophagus. Okay. Which is I how see. you choke someone, of course, you take them. So it's like Darth Vader. They can do it from afar. Yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of like... Okay. Oh! Oh, man, and, Lorelei. And this... All, f first of all, is, is Lorelei named after Lorelei Shannon, designer Probably. of uh, Phantasmagoria 2? I'm sure. Lorelei is not exactly a common name. It seems like one of those Sierra in jokes. You know, you yeah, it does, doesn't it? Me out, and she like does kind of bear a physical you? resemblance Anybody to home? her in the close-up that she? comes up. Yes, yeah, she actually does. I've I'm never friend. actually seen Laura Lash in it. Well, she's not African-American. Like? <laughs> no, she's not African-American, but uh, 
Neither is Madame Lorelei. She's oh, white, but she looks. She, that does not look did, like her at all. That was weird. Yeah. If she's, I th wait. She was. Uh, please agree with me on this. She looked African American in that close-up. <laughs> she didn't did. She? she did. Yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not just a man. I'm not being racist. She or changed anything. colors. <laughs> yeah. She changed race. Yeah, she did. Also, Speaking who's of, who's the jack off on the opposite side of the street that never closes their uh, top door? Window? Thing? Oh, I don't know. I Some right. pervert I, who looks down into the into Bourbon Street. <laughs> also, yes. for being Bourbon Street, it's very quiet. Yeah, I mean, well, it's a the summer. Part of, yeah, no, no it's daylight all of a sudden. In the summer. Oh yeah, it is. Um, for being Bourbon Street, like there's quieter parts of Bourbon Street, but yeah, it's very very quiet. You would expect um, some bottles to be thrown around, some vomit yeah. stains. Uh. The road was blocked, the truth was shunned, the white flag had been waved. Reversal cost me all I had and everything I break. I have no idea what he's talking about there. Something about, uh, I mean, it is the halfway point, so mm. it's kind of got this uh, too late to turn back vibe to it. Yeah, we, isn't we'd this the, I think this is the horoscope. Where it's like there's a dark eye on you or something. <laughs> I like I like actually, the, okay? the one at the end where there's a school teacher somewhere who's yeah. damn You're confused. Great. There's wow. one horoscope that says the shadow upon you is no if longer I'm reversible. Right, dead now. But the oh, way yeah. that uh, the way that Virginia Capers reads it, she puts this really long pause between no longer and reversible. So I always thought for the longest time that it said, Oh, the shadow upon you is no longer. That. Where is it? So reversible. I was like, oh, that's nice. And then <laughs> Reversible. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, you so bitch! It took me, yeah, it took me a while to get that, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Grace, committing, uh... It, it is technically a felony going through other people's it mail, is. is it? not? It is. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, but we're not, we're not gonna peg yeah. on her because she knows jujitsu. Right. Or Tai Chi. Um, at this point, when Ray Gabriel reads the journal, it definitely gives him a bit more of a motivation to do stuff. Yes, Same this is where the uh, the motivation can- uh, Why does he answer the phone like he, that? Yeah. I love how Gabriel answers you, old gothic emo. <laughs> Wait, I mean, I, I know he probably thought that Malia was on the other end, but still. <laughs> I wonder how many phone calls he normally gets. Very few, I would imagine. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> One of them is like that pet store calling back on, you know, we star 69 you and some chick picked up the phone and went, what? And, uh, by the way, we're sending over a uniform. Uh, he might have star 60. No, you don't. You don't star 67 beforehand. Never mind. The, uh, uh, honestly, the whole Star 69 thing is a very American thing. The only reason it I is. know about it is because of War Games. Awesome. And, uh, uh, and that famous line in Fight Club where I Star 69 you, I never pick up my phone. Right. So that was hilarious. But right. we, we don't actually have that in Denmark. I would be surprised if anyone did. But yeah, Star 67 is if you wanted them to not be able to trace your number. Don't look so worried. How does that work? You star so, 67 so if, and then you dial the number and then the they book. can't trace you if they do star 69 they don't get it oh, Okay, so it's uh, it's like removing that little plastic tip from a, a, a floppy disk that just goes Don't sure. copy me, please Exactly. Yeah. The only metaphors I understand have something to do with DOS paraphernalia Fair enough. I'm actually Anatoly in disguise with a funnier accent. I thought you seemed familiar. <laughs> so there's one thing that I want to bring up, and I didn't know, I was thinking about whether I should bring it up or not, but let's bring it up. So Sam, do it. going back, oh, here we go. Oh, there you go. See? <laughs> yeah, that took a it good goddamn like, while. Yeah, anyway, um, so Sam, uh, we dealt with him earlier in this video. Yes, the, uh, the jeweler. The jeweler, yes. Now, if you notice Sam's portrayal, he is a bald, middle-aged looking, or older looking, African-American man. But when he oh, yeah. speaks, he speaks in a certain way, and that certain way could best be described as stereotypical common Jewish man accent. Yeah, I was I was trying to work out a way to, to say that in a funny yeah. way, but you, he's like, you did it a lot better. Oh, he was towing the thing, you know. <laughs> And I don't really think the voice matches the character portrayal at all. And I wonder if the reason they did that was because he is a jeweler, and historically speaking, oh. jewelers were usually Jewish. I see where you're going with that. Yeah, so I kind of wonder if that was like a subtle little 
thing that they did, and I don't really know how to feel about it. I'm, it well, kind of leaves think... me with a bad taste in my mouth. Well, probably. We can leave out racism because uh, we, uh, for all his bong-toting, Stuart M. Rosen is in fact Jewish himself. Okay. So, uh, that's not the reason. I think that goes back to him just not reading the fucking script. Yeah, probably. Or looking at the art or anything. Anyway, uh, it, it's what, what really makes me, what really makes me think that it's awful and that it leaves me with a bad taste in my mouth is if you're supposed to associate the fact that, like, you're supposed to think, oh, he speaks like a Jewish person, maybe he's a jeweler. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the that would really Right, but that would really be only the thing in the in the, the CD version, because in the floppy version, obviously, he wouldn't, because he didn't have any any speech patterns or anything in his text that... No. And also, anyone who was actually interested in the lore of this, just freeze frame this part. Oh, right, yeah. Because I cut that off, or sense. just go read the fucking manual, sure. it's online, yeah. there's a whole... Uh, graphic novel of research, what actually happened to uh, Sad Gunther und the Leopard. Yes. Uh, reference to episode one. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And um, actually, the whole thing that uh, I think the reason is because uh, he's in a bar, he's playing chess all day long, and the uh, I think the stereotype is that old Jewish people go to the park or go to bars to play chess all day. Sure. Uh, I've seen that in several American movies. Yeah, of course. Uh, not trying to be racist. That is just how it's portrayed in, in several movies. Hey, um, Hot Ridge, what's the good word? Oh, Hot Ridge is dead. Hot Ridge? Oh, what's the good word, buddy? Nothing, because he's dead. <laughs> oh, uh, not <laughs> And his hand is sort of stuck in his collar. Hmm. Oh God! His last word. His last words were. But I'm heterosexual. <laughs> Don't look at my mouth position. There was a vagina in my mouth. I swear. <laughs> Mr. Gonzalez, <laughs> I would imagine I was the one to go there, but no, sir, you have trumped me. I'm full of surprises. Yes. Delightful, delightfully, delightfully moist surprises. Oh. oh, yeah, I had to get the word moist in there. Of course you did. Um, and uh, incidentally, anyway, the scene, I, the scene in the novel, is really good. Uh, it's okay. one of those things that were uh, that was embellished. <laughs> I actually had to crossfade there because I was dicking around the inventory for yeah, so long. Yeah, I like that inventory <laughs> crossfade. It was very stylish. I actually only got up to day three in the novel. Oh yeah, because uh, in in this one, it's not like a huge uh, like embellishment. It's, right there. it's a it's a tiny Wait, one where he walks through the hallway. And he's supposed to go and visit Hartridge. And he gets lost on campus. He's been there a couple of times, but now he gets lost and the hallways seem to go on forever and he gets turned uh, around like he does uh, in the swamp later on. So it's kind of uh, foreshadowing that. It's really very good. And okay. I'm so fucking glad they didn't translate that into the actual game yeah, of you getting turned around. Because yeah. that would have been a nightmare. Yeah, because if they had put in another maze, that would have been bad. Oh, uh, and it's also just like a maze of randomness, like you can just get teleported. What is that game? Shadow of the Comet. There's a yes. maze in there that if you hit a dead end, it teleports you to a random part of the map. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, and, and you can you can show mostly a lot of shit. Uh, some of them you need to progress in the game, and uh, some are just, you know, like, fun things to show him like does this actually prove anything and they went to the extra trouble to i think i think uh, showing him the pattern is not something you're supposed i don't think that furthers the or does it i'm not sure i think it does now wait uh, showing the uh, uh showing the diary uh because you might infer that because uh, you have the shot jaeger diary it says that uh, it proves that they were a threat a long time ago and now right. they're a threat today that's not actually what you're supposed to do okay uh mostly of course being a totally shit detective doesn't ask where he got the patterns from because he was the only person with the patterns how did they escape from the police station let's just right. gloss over that like my badge Take yeah. these notes. Well, he does ask him, and he says, I'll borrow them, but he doesn't really follow up on that. What about them? Yeah, mostly he's not big on following up on anything, is he? No, he's not. There's a lot of Donut Cop, uh, you know, and the, I think the reason why mostly is so beloved is, and I'm going to go on a limb here, is because he's voiced by Mark Hamill, and Mark Hamill is awesome. Yeah. If, if, he, was, if he was voiced by anyone else, really, yeah, and and portrayed in this exact same way, you'd go that fucking mostly. 
<sighs> I mean, I... A lot of... Gabriel Knight 3 gets a lot of flack. I actually like Gabriel Knight 3. Um, I'm gonna be controversial and say that I actually like it better than Gabriel Knight 2. That is um, controversial. Yes. But I didn't think that the actor that they played, they got, they got to play mostly in Gabriel Knight 3 was bad. I mean, he was obviously trying to match Mark Hamill's characterization. Hmm. I thought he did a pretty good job, actually. So, there's that. I've never gotten past uh, sketch the first the 20 or 30 minutes of Gabriel Knight 3. And I know, and this is weird because I know Gabriel, one, uh, Gabriel Knight 1 and 2, like backwards, symbols. back mm. to front. And but Gabriel Knight 3 never got into it, really. Mm. I, it's I a should... shame. It's a good yeah. game. It's Obviously, it gets it really? Yeah, I mean, it gets, you know, there's of course the infamous cat hair mustache puzzle, but... And actually, I actually got past that one. And then yeah. I went, fuck this game. So... Oh. But beyond that, it's actually there's a whole sequence where you get you have to sneak into all the rooms in the hotel of all the and get dirt on all the other guests. That's a lot of fun. I think I'll leave a message hmm. of my own. And uh, sounds there's the a little whole stressful. Le Serpent Rouge. Well, no, it's not stressful because they're not in any danger of coming back. They're all out on tour. Oh, on okay. tour. It's just the maid. Uh, oh, look, you put. You put I had translation. to. Oh, nice. I had to because uh, I I knew we'd probably be talking over this, okay. so I just I just put that in in case anyone was wondering what the fuck I was doing. Right. This is by far the most difficult puzzle in the entire game. For probably my money, one of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could be stuck for fucking ever. Oh, look at the lighting in here. That is that is some buffo lighting. This is also the first point you can die, as I mentioned in. Yes. Oh, there's the death. The that, that was death the no. The death <laughs> sound effect cue. Yeah. Choke! Three exclamation mark! <laughs> I think I, I actually wish... died here the first time and I hadn't saved my game. You the fucking first time snake! I ever played this. Yeah. And the snake is really snake in a wiggly mood. Me. Yeah. You did? I am sorry. <laughs> this is, Dr. Jonas not even looking at him. He's no. just looking off into the distance going, I should probably catch that snake, Fine. but. Probably. You excuse me. Kinda I'm cornering me. I must go look for him. He is incredibly valuable. Thanks, Worf. You need to ask twice. Yep. I'm out of here. Wait. By the way, you might um, your doll next time you close. You did the... Bad, it just let you do the voodoo Goodbye, thing. Mr. But... Today's yeah. day five. Yeah. What That's another thing. You can solve that puzzle ahead of time and the game doesn't yeah. care. Well, you're kind hmm. of a... Uh, so, actually, color. when yeah. this day ends... Uh, you would think that Dr. John, hey, spoiler, green. DJ no. is Dr. John, oh. Oh. Um, you'd think he'd go to the cemetery and go, holy yeah. fuck, I have to get my kid out for tonight? Oh, yeah. Jesus, uh, snake Unless and everything. Unless he just doesn't go to the cemetery until St. John's Eve. I love it when you There's that. And you're just being preemptive. Right. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I preempted that because actually I was kind of wandering around in a circle going, what am I supposed to do to finish this day? Oh, I'll go to the cemetery, I'll write, because I know the right. answer beforehand. Sure. So I just put that on the wall, and it, it's not until the next episode that I go, wait, I was supposed to do that on this day, actually. Right. But yeah, the game just lets you, lets you do that. Well, fair. Yeah, fair. Oh, look, it's exactly the same. <gasps> Oh. The iridescent scale is brilliantly <laughs> huge. <laughs> <laughs> that was me getting excited. I see. Yeah. I feel like I was talking about something and then trailed off, but I don't remember what it was. No, it's, I, I totally interrupted you when we got to the graveyard. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, what were we talking about? Matches the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. Uh, how Virginia Capers is very excited about snake scales. <laughs> Poncho train! She's very excited about Poncho train! <laughs> she goes very French on that one. Anyway, that, that's the last bit you need to show mostly until he goes, Alright, fine. I'll look into it. Now let's get out of here and go somewhere else. And what is he doing with his hands when he's talking mostly? It's like he's, uh, he's juggling. Like he's, he's folding a meatball. Yeah, he's juggling. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, we were talking about Gabriel Knight somehow, 3. Somewhere. Oh, right! Yes, uh, I was a saying subject that... I was trying to shut down and you kept... Go no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just... No, I just... I like Gabriel Knight 3. I think it gets a lot of undeserved hate. 
Not bad. Yeah, and that is be that is because of that infamous opening puzzle uh, that yeah. led to that infamous article that led and to that the, infamous yeah. thing. And the 3D has not okay. aged well, I admit. And some people don't like the control scheme, even though I I think it's a clever, it's an interesting. Control I I love scheme. I love I think well, it's I think it's super clever as well. I like the idea that you're controlling the camera and not the protagonist. Yeah. I think that's super clever. The one thing I really hate about it is that the icons look like they were drawn in MS Paint. Oh, that's true too. Yeah. The icons are fucking ugly. Yeah. But aside from that, I yeah, I like it. And I don't like Gabriel Knight 2 for several reasons. But I I respect the story and I think the historical aspect is actually really probably the best implemented of all three games. But I just don't like the execution of Gabriel Knight 2. Not just because it's FMV. Oh look, there's a drummer outside the police station now. Really? Ooh, he wasn't there before. Maybe he's starting maybe they're starting a band and they just can't maybe. figure out where to meet and rehearse. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But uh, I, yeah, if if we were ever, I mean, I'm not making any plans on the air, but if I should ever play through Gabriel Knight Two, you're ha welcome to join me. I don't, you're not mm. happy to join me. I don't, I wouldn't make that assumption, but welcome. I'd I'd be interested in talking about what works and what doesn't in Gabriel Knight Two. My main beef with it is the characterization of Grace. And yes, mine too. Yeah. You wouldn't believe Dang. how much I agree with that, uh, mm. and it is such a shame because the actress is actually very good. Yeah. And she gets... Oh, sad gun through time. Nope. Sad postage stamp sized gun through time. <laughs> sad Gunter. <laughs> and sad Gunter. <laughs> Meet and Miss Leopard. The Leopard! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Leopard has titties. Yeah, Leopard has titties and also and a big ring of fire with another ring of fire around it. And she and throws burn, talisman. Burn, 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 ring of fire. <laughs> There's one dude off to the side going, we don't need no one. Shut up, John! <laughs> His name is John yes. for some reason. It's a very common name in Germany. You just, uh... yeah. <laughs> also, Gunther, there's something calling on your neck. You might want to have that looked into. Oh, it's a hangman. Oh, yeah. Sad, sad Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he looks very shocked that someone would actually hang him off that tree. It's like he, he was not expecting oh, that. And there we go. That was episode 8. I hope you enjoyed that, everyone out there. I did. I did, uh, too. I'm so glad you did. So, uh, uh, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, we are going to... Uh, oh shit, we don't have any more uh, episodes in the queue, so... Uh, we yeah. don't? I thought we had 8. We, we had four. We've done 5, 6, 7, and... Oh, wait, we do. I'm going to cut this bit out. We have one more. We have one more. Good. I'm going to cut this bit out. It just, uh, the thing, uh, the playlist thing just went to the next mm. one without me right. noticing. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> thank you for watching that. Please like, subscribe, do whatever you kids do, but do leave us a comment because, oh my God, we so love the comments. I do anyway. Uh, and even though Francisco says he never reads the comment, he secretly does. Oh, it's not a secret. I definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> so... Cheers, and we will see you next week and around the Chrono Stream. <laughs> wow, I'm a professional.